Good evening. I wish Varupa Rat welcome you all to the digital media platform of Uday India. Here are today's main highlights. <clears throat> The BJP and the Congress were locked in a furious back and forth over Congress MP Rahul Gandhi's meeting with controversial priest George Punaya during the party's Bharat Jodo Yatra. <clears throat> in the video, the priest could be heard saying, "Jesus is a real God, unlike Shakti." Sharing a video of Rahul Gandhi and George Punaya's tit a tit on Twitter, BJP spokesperson Shahzad Punawala launched a scathing attack on Congress. He said, "Judge Punaya, who met Rahul Gandhi, says Jesus is the only God, unlike Shakti and other gods." <clears throat> This man was arrested for his Hindu hatred earlier. He also said, "I wear shoes because impurities of Bharat Mata should not contaminate us." Bharat Jodo with Bharat Jodo icons. BJP IT cell in charge Amit Malviya slammed Rahul Gandhi for his meeting with Punaya, known. for his inflammatory statements and termed the congress party's bharat jodo yatra a sham if meeting a controversial pastor who is known for his visceral disdain the majority community and their beliefs rahul gandhi's idea of bharat jodo then this yatra is nothing but a sham how can indulging faith supremacists serve the larger society and bring cohesion tweeted malviya Prime Minister Narendra Modi today urged all the states to work together in building India as the global center of science and technology in the Amrit Kaal. The Prime Minister was addressing the gathering after inaugurating a two-day center state science conclave at Science City, Ahmedabad, through video conferencing. Mr. Modi asked states to provide all necessary support to the scientists and give trust in building science and technology institutes in the state. He said. The number of innovation labs should also be increased in the institutions of higher education in the states. He also highlighted the need to take scientific research to the grassroots level and find science-based solution to the local problems. The prime minister said his government is working with a vision of science-based development, and since 2014 there has been a substantial increase in investment in the field of science and technology. Mr Modi said everyone has to work on many fronts simultaneously to make India a global center of research and innovation in this Amrit Kaal. Five Congress MPs have written to AICC Central Election Authority thief, chief Madhusudan Mistri expressing concerns about transparency and fairness of party's chief election. seeking that the list of pcc delegates that make up the electoral college be provided to all electors and potential candidates in a joint letter to ms 3 dated september 6 congress's lok sabha members shashi tharoor manish tiwari karti chindambaram pradyut bordoloi and abdul khaliq said this list must be made available in order to verify who is entitled to nominate a candidate and who is entitled to vote in case the cea has any concerns with respect to releasing the electoral rolls publicly it must put in place a mechanism to securely share this information with all electors and potential candidates the letter said they said that Congress MPs they are concerned about the transparency and fairness of election process for the president of the party The military camp in Kibithu Arunachal Pradesh has been renamed as Chen Bipin Rawat military garrison in the honor of country's first chief of defense staff who was killed in a chopper crash last December Kibithu is a small hamlet on the banks of the Lohit valley in the rest of Arunachal Pradesh close to the line of actual control general rawat commanded his battalion 511 gorkha rifles here as a colonel from 1999 to 2000 a gate built in local traditional architectural style was inaugurated by the governor brigadier db mishra the 22 km road stretch from valong to kibithu was dedicated as general bipin rawat mark by pima kandu chief minister of Arunachal Pradesh the event was at, at, attended by Lieutenant General General 
R. P. Kalita, General Officer, Commanding in Chief Eastern Command and Daughters of General Rawat, among others. India and China have mutually agreed to take the talks forward and resolve the remaining issues along the line of con actual control and restore peace and tranquility in the border areas after both sides started the disengagement process at Gogra Hot Springs area on Thursday. <clears throat> Commenting on the disengagement announcement by both sides, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mao Ning said that the beginning of disengagement at Gogra Hot Spring area is positive development that is conducive to peace and tranquility along the border. She added that China is committed to properly handling relevant issues through communication and dialogue. Ms. Mao Ning further said that the agreement was the outcome of multiple rounds of talks between both military and diplomatic levels and is conducive to peace and tranquility along border areas. She expressed hope that this will help to facilitate the sound and steady development of bilateral relations. India has consistently maintained that peace and tranquility along the LAC were important for the overall development of bilateral ties. The Supreme Court has observed that if stray dogs attack people, those who feed them could be held liable. While emphasizing the need to find a solution to the menace of stray dogs, the Apex Court said people who routinely feed stray dogs could be made responsible for their vaccination. A bench of justices, Sanjeev Khanna and J.K. Maheshwari, was hearing petitions in connection with the stray dogs menace in Kerala. The bench emphasized the need to protect innocent people from being attacked by stray dogs. Advocate VK Biju submitted that since August 8, eight persons have died and school children and women are being attacked by ferocious dogs in public places. Biju had recently raised the issue of stray dogs' attacks before the top court and highlighted the recent death of a 12-year-old victim in Kerala. After hearing arguments, the top court scheduled the matter for further hearing on September 28. <clears throat> Indian Railways will be introducing the new avatar of high-speed train Vande Bharat, namely Vande Bharat 2. It will be equipped with more advancements and improved features like 0 to 100 kmpl speed in just 52 seconds, maximum speed up to 120 kmph, lesser weight of 392 tons instead of 430 tons, and Wi-Fi content on demand. New Vande Bharat will also have 32-inch LCD TVs, which were 24-inch in earlier versions. 15% more energy-efficient ACs with dust-free clean air cooling of the traction motor will make the travel more comfortable. Side recliner seat facility, which is being provided to executive class passengers, will now be made available for all classes. In the new design of Vande Bharat Express, photocatalytic ultraviolet air purification system is installed in the roof-mounted roof -mounted package unit for air purification. Ms. Kristalina Georgieva, Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, called on the President of India, Srimadhi Draupadi Murmu, at Rashtrapati Bhavan today. Welcoming Georgieva to Rashtrapati Bhavan, the president said that the world is passing through the third year of the COVID pandemic. She noted that significant assistance has been provided to many low-income countries by multilateral institutions such as the IMF and the World Bank. She said that the IMF ha has to play an important role in maintaining the stability of international monetary system. Union Minister for Surface Transport and Highways Nitin Gatkari has assured that Bengaluru will be decongested and a multi-mode transport system will be introduced in the city. Addressing media persons in Bengaluru today at the conclusion of Manthan Conclave, the minister said that he held two rounds of talks with the Chief Minister Basavraj Bumai on resolving traffic jams in the city. He added that state has been asked to set up an authority that can coordinate with all the agencies working in the area of infra infrastructure. He informed that public transport must be encouraged by introduction of double-decker and trolley buses as in Mumbai. He informed that a suggestion 
was given on the introduction of sky bus in Bengaluru, for which a feasibility report will be obtained from international experts in three months. Four months after he had to abruptly resign as chief minister, Biplab Dev was on Friday nominated by BJP as a party's candidate for Rajya Sabha by election in Tripura. The announcement came hours after he was decla declared party in charge for Haryana. The state's lone upper house seat and foreign vacant after Rajya Sabha MP Manik Saha replaced Dev as CM. The two consecutive moves on Friday seem like a bid by the BJP to accommodate Dave and keep him happy. While on paper his victory is... The BJP has 36 MLAs in the 60-member Tripura Assembly. An ally, IPFT, another eight. The left front has been claiming cracks within the ruling coalition. A seven-year-old boy in Pune's Pimpri Chinchwar was murdered after he went missing on September 8. After he did not return home, the boy's father lodged a complaint in the police station on the same evening. The boy's father allegedly received a phone call demanding rupees 20 crore as a ransom for his release. The police conducted research and got hold of two accused in the crime. The two live in the same housing complex as the boy and his family. During the police interrogation, they confessed to kidnapping the child and murdering him. Britain's King Charles has named his eldest son William and daughter-in-law Kate, the Prince and Princess of Wales. In his first speech to the nation since the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth, on Thursday, King Charles, King Charles said he is proud to make his heir William, Prince of Wales, a title Charles had held since 1958. William and Kate, both Fort Fatty, have taken on central roles within the royal family in recent years, appearing regularly in public and increasingly taking their three young children to events such as Queen's Platinum Jubilee earlier this year. Britain's King Charles III paid a heartfelt tribute to late Queen Elizabeth II, vowed to serve as monarch with loyalty, respect and love. He described her mother as darling mama. In his first address to the nation as king last night, Charles paid tribute to his mother for her devotion to her family and to those she reigned over. Elizabeth, Britain's longest reigning monarch and towering presence on the world stage for 70 years, died on Thursday at her home in Scotland, aged 96. At least two people were killed and 11 are missing in flood and landslide-related incidents in Banga, Banga Bhagat area of Darchula district of Nepal that borders India. The incessant rainfall since yesterday resulted in flooding of the Lasku and Mahakali river. The Darchula district police O office and said some people were pulled out from landmass immediately after the landslide. Over a dozen houses have been swept by the flood in Kalanga, the district headquarter. A few vehicles were also swept away in the flood which caused permanent dam damage to suspension and a concrete bridge. <clears throat> Search and rescue operation is currently underway. In Asia Cup T20 cricket, Sri Lanka defeated Pakistan by five wickets in the last Super 4 stage match at Dubai International Cricket Stadium last night. Chasing 122 for victory, Sri Lanka overhauled the target for five wickets and 18 balls to spare. Patum Nisanka scored unbeaten 55 of 48 for Sri Lanka. Earlier put into bat, Pakistan were all out scoring only 121 in 19.1 overs. Babar Azam scored 30 of 29 for Pakistan while Vanindu Hasaranga picked up three wickets for Sri Lanka. Both the teams will play final match on Sunday. Australian white ball captain Aaron Finch called time on his one-day international career on Saturday after a poor run of form. However, he will remain skipper of the 20th side for the World Cup at home next month. The 35-year-old will play his 146th and final ODI on Sunday in Keynes against New Zealand, capping an outstanding career in the 50-over format, which he has scored 5,401 runs at an average of 39. His 17 centuries put him behind only great Ricky Ponting, David Warner, and Mark Waugh, and one clear of Adam Gilchrist. He will remain captain of the T20 side 
he led to a maiden World Cup crown last year and has seven more games to find form before their title defence starts against the Black Caps in Sydney on October 22. This was it for today. Stay tuned for latest update.